upgrade my plan. All right. <laughs> we're live. Yeah, so we're going. So it looks like that. I think Ningua, Ningawa, Chris, Ninguea. I probably butchered that. Wow. Yeah. And Bill. So welcome, everybody. We've got Meandering Mike uh, from up in Washington State. And uh, Ruggiero's Corner, and Mike's the star today, and it looks like we've got star. six viewers. And uh, and if you're a viewer, just ID yourself in the chat, say hello, and uh, we'll monitor it, try to answer some questions. And if you've watched any of these shows before, it's pretty free form. So, Mike, welcome. I really appreciate you uh, joining us today. And... Um, I I always seem to start this way. I got to come up with something more original. But so what what got you started in gaming, war gaming? Uh, you know what's going on? And we'll talk a little bit, see how it goes from there. All right. Well, first I want to thank you for having me on and say hello to everyone, all your watchers on uh, Clark Commando 1983. Good old Mark Gar there. Yeah. Um, so I I'd, I'd played some, you know war themed board games like you know milton bradley's chopper strike or tank battles or those kind of things <clears throat> the first real war game that i got into was spi um our local uni university of washington i lived near enough to ride our bikes up there when we were kids and they opened up this like expansion store across from the university bookstore and uh, I was browsing around and I saw these things on the shelf and it was like, whoa, and I recognize that that's a tiger tank, you know, and I was, what are these? And there was all these SPI games and oh, wow. it was like some of the, the S and T magazines and some folio games. And I was just, I would look at them for hours and finally I decided to buy one. And it was that tiger tank by Panzer 44. <sighs> So that was back in like 1975. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I, was high, I was like in eighth grade or the end of seventh grade or something. Oh, and uh, I'll, I'll tell you, it was nothing like Chopper Strike or Tank Battle from Milton Bradley. I had to read the rules three times, three times before I could understand what was going on and actually start to try to play. So. That was my introduction to real war gaming. Uh, I'm, I'm actually, uh, it's kind of funny because, see, 1975, I was 10. But all those games you mentioned, I, I think I still have them in my closet. Um, I know I have Tank Battle. And I know that I have, uh, of course, Stratego and stuff. And I want to say I have Chopper Strike. Now you made me think I'm going to have to go look. <laughs> I'm, I think I actually still have that in my closet. But uh, and then, wow, a university store. That's that's it's very interesting. And absolutely, I've mentioned before, we tend to forget the war game. He has its own language, right? And, <laughs> and I've told my oh, yeah told my story a million times so I'm not going to tell it again but tactics too when I got that I was like I mean I was like I was literally 10 years old and I remember if I probably didn't play it correctly for at least six months <laughs> like I just did not zones of control move what what oh uh, we'll just do it this way and I don't remember <laughs> how I did it but but uh yeah no amazing and i want people in that are in the chat here that we got just to you know if you have some questions pop questions up etc so i i'm going to i'm going to ask you what what uh what got you to how long ago did you if a lot of people don't know meandering mike he has his own youtube channel and so talk a little bit about that what motivated you to start it when did whatever you want to share about it when did you start it how long you know just you know uh what i i know why i did mine but what, why do you, you know why why do we spend the so, time that we do why do you do it somewhere along the line uh decided to retire early part of it was because of the pandemic and uh my wife and i both decided that we were we were gonna 
try to make that work. And I had a plan where I wanted to spend some of my times playing, you know, the war games from the past. I had I had been accumulating more and more starting basically in 2017 when I had thought about getting into game design again. Um, but didn't have any real plans to do anything about it until I eventually retired. And so I'd been watching um, some of these live streams, like Hard Wolf and Dan and the guys in the, the war room, um, you know, ID Jester and Tony's Board Life and uh, Rough Stars and War Gamer. And uh, a couple times I'd mention, I, I'd make some joke about something like, well, yeah, I'll cover that on my channel, you know, a year from now or something. And uh, at some point when we, when we, bought our house that we're going to tire in that we're in, in now. And I started getting my game store set up. Um, people started asking about, well, show us your man cave, show us your man cave. So yeah. I hadn't planned, you know, for at least six to nine months to start my channel. I wasn't, you know, we weren't all moved in yet. I wasn't all set up, but people wanted to see it. So I started, I just started, I started filming, you know, at first it was, vertical mode you know I, I started learning so oh no you're not supposed to do that do it sideways so i went to do it sideways but it didn't stick and it converted so that my second video was you know literally <laughs> sideways and slowly i kept improving and and you know videos where the cameras jerk it off people say i'm getting seasick you know so eventually i got a tripod and started to learn us i was doing the first unboxings sitting on a bed that had a ruby uh bed spread and i was like flipping things around and you know some people were saying this was unwatchable you know <laughs> so I kept, learning, <laughs> kept doing you know so i've I'm, I'm not perfect but i'm making improvements and i'm you know slowly acquiring more equipment eventually i want to get a nice play area where i have like a camera on an arm that's on a you know fixed steady thing that i can get down at the right height to be over something but i can still I want to see through the camera. You know, I, I want to look. Yeah, and make I know sure what you I'm mean. At the right thing. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I know. So you know, I started my channel. I don't know four or five years ago, and it was really just I was on vacation and I had a job that I worked. You know, seventy hour weeks, and I said, you know what, I'm going to just start creating some. You know, and just. You know, as you can go back, look at some of my old videos. I've always used my phone. I actually got a camera for Christmas that I haven't even started using yet. And I actually have some software to uh, edit and do stuff. And I, I just, I don't know. I just haven't done a lot with it. But, um, um, you know, obviously, right, it's fun. And, and it's, uh, you know, my challenge is, you know, I did get a, a tripod and, I use my phone still, but uh, is every once in a while I've gotten I've gotten better at it. Is make sure I'm not like leaning in front of my camera, so you just <laughs> see like the back of my head. Which actually, oh, yeah. I've deleted those videos and and had to redo stuff. But uh, so what what brings you the most fun doing it? What's your you know your motivation? Like I mean, obviously we do it for fun. Well, otherwise, we wouldn't do it. But there, there are definitely some things that are frustrating and less fun than they could be but in general it is fun i like sharing the knowledge and experience i've gained over the years and um with games you know like i said i was you know, playing way back in the the early mid 70s uh, and, and played quite extensively up you know through the 80s until the early 90s when i got married then i pretty much stopped playing all sorts of uh, board games and war games other than computer games. Um, but I was, you know, talking about tactics and strategies. And so some of my playthroughs are, you know, quite detailed and, and over detailed in most cases. Uh, so I'm trying to find that happy balance between, you know, talking at a high level and some of the detail and not make something like I filmed over 20 hours of Britannia content. That's my top two favorite. War games are Britannia by Louis Pulsifer and then SPI's Battle for Germany by Jim Dunnigan. And, wow. uh, you know, tw over 20 hours of content, 
is, is, is too much. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Well, hey, you know, if you enjoy it, right? So let me, I'm going to just share a couple comments here and then we got a question. So Bill, which I, by the way, I just talked to him on the phone the other day, very, you know, fun, friendly guy. But I guess he's sharing how he got started, right? Friend's mom came across War Games, KB Toys. Yep, I know exactly. <laughs> KB Toys. Then she gave it to him. Uh, squad leader. Yep. I mean, come on. Roger McGowan, that's just classic artwork. I'm a big fanboy. And then you grab Third Reich, Bill. That's pretty interesting because the reason I say that is because I went from Tactics 2 and for Christmas I got Third Reich. And I think that took me like another year to figure out, <laughs> you know, after that. But uh, Ninguaya, Chris, got a question here, He's, right? So you know him. So I've heard that actual generals and such played war games. True. That's very true. Uh, is there a general you'd like to play against and in which game? <laughs> well, my my just automatic response would say Napoleon. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, without okay. thinking Perfect. about it. but yeah, um, That's legitimate. Hey. Yeah, I I I think I'd play him at Napoleon's last last battle, you know, quad campaign game. You know, <laughs> let's let's uh, see how how that would come out there if he uh, can have a different result at Waterloo or not. Um, just I don't know any anything. Just <laughs> playing against a. I think I think that's pretty game. interesting. I, that's a pretty interesting question because I actually couldn't think of one. And I want to salute your. Uh, your dedication in the sense of uh, like Chris is a real focus, obviously under Walt Creek, but for you to film that much content on, I, I just, if it's a war game, I love it. I mean, I have my favorites and I've done a lot of like the death ride system. I've done, um, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think world at war from GMT, but outside of that, I mean, I'm all over the damn place, you know. I know I'm motivated by you. Eventually, I'll bust out some of those uh, historical board game company uh, titles. But uh, they do play pretty some fast. Stuff from White Dog, yeah. So I, you know, people I have this reputation as oh, Mark just loves monster games, which is true. I do actually, yeah, I really do. But uh, I'll play it if you know, <laughs> if it's a war game, I'll play it. You know, I'm, I'm definitely not the guy to ask, hey, Mark, you know, because I like to try to find, I think, what's good in a game. You know, I'll criticize a game constructively, but I like to find what's good in it because I'm not a creator. And without the creators, you know, we don't have a hobby. So, and it's, you know, but I appreciate like your videos. What's some of your favorite, um, um, sorry, what's some of, so what is it? What's some of your favorite? So you've said Britannia. What was the other game you said is one of your favorite? Battle for Germany from SPI. Yep, it's the right. one where one side yep, yep. plays the Western Allies and the Germans on the East Front, and then the Soviets play, and then they they run the Germans on the Western Front. I, I, yeah, I, we I actually, have. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, we actually uh, played that in high school a few times. Where I would play the three player variant. I would be the Germans. I would get both sides. And I would win, you know. So, you know, some of my guys they 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 weren't quite as up on the tactics and 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 hadn't you know played it as much, but it was a lot of fun to try to win as the Germans. And I won like three out of four games as the Germans, wow. which was pretty amazing. But you know, I, I came up with some cheesy tactics against the Russians and you know trying to force them to get exchanges and lose those fronts, those big eight twenty defense three movement guys and. Things like that. I, I have the SPI version and I have the decision remake, which is my, but uh, the one that just got done like a year or two ago. Yeah. So. Yeah. I've not played the, the new version yet. I mean, graphically, the new ones look nice, but I'm always a little leery about how decision games sometimes change things, you know? Well, I'm, I'm here to tell you that I really believe they've turned a corner because Doc's actually retired now. So, and, you know, and I get it. I don't want to, you know, focus on it. People, you know, tend to, I, I hear you. They've made some big boo-boos, but uh, I think some of their, like, I got to tell you, their 
ultimate edition toller Krieg is like I'm on my second four player game and it's wow out awesome. of the park. Yeah, it's phenomenal game. It's like it's uh, yeah, it's but I think they're doing a lot better. But that being said, uh let's see here. Scott, what is sir? Yeah, Bill got let's see, what does he say? This is help me. So SPI entered the picture because of his mom again, local family bookstore had over 100 titles. We cut a lot of grass. Oh, I pet. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I can. Yeah. What's your favorite? You know, so you've been around a, a little bit longer. Well, you're, you know, a little bit older than me. What's, what's your, do you have a favorite SPI game or do you have a, something that really stands well, out from that era? So, so like I said, like Battle for Germany was my favorite because of the experience of playing the three player variant. But there's quite a few that I, I really liked a lot. I, I played War in Europe um, a couple of times, and that was a lot of fun. I really liked the Napoleon's, uh, quad, both quad, the, the Napoleon at War and the Napoleon's Last Battles. I like quirky games like Sorcerer, you know, the psychedelic color stuff that people are like, what the heck is this game? And I just thought it was really weird, the color wheel and how, you know, it's like movement-wise and power-wise, it's like you want to, you know, move quick through, you know, the opposite color and you're more powerful in the same color and this this weird combination of stuff that's just mind-blowing crazy stuff. I mean, they made some really weird time tripper, you know, and things like that. They, they were doing some weird innovation there, you know. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. They were, no, I mean, in, you know, my experience with SPI is a lot different because I was a spoiled Avalon Hill child and you know, I go to the KB Toys or the hobby store and, oh, do I want to buy Panzer Leader and Panzer Blitz or do I want some with paper maps? And honestly, by the time that I started getting a few SPI titles, there was like 19, like right towards the end of their, you know, 1980 right somewhere close to the end and my first game i bought and i i actually still have it and okay maybe it wasn't that bad but it was world war three and i know when i was a kid i was like just so disappointed like i had this cool cover right with the mobile scud missile on it and stuff and i bought it and i read the rules and i'm like like literally <laughs> I don't know. So, but, but after the fact, and, you know, I got a few that I, a friend of mine, we had a group that played, played uh, War in the Ice. Um, I still have a couple copies of that. Recently just sold one or my friend Dave sold it for me, but I have really fond memories of that. And I have, of course, War in Europe, which I just met a guy local. Uh, so we, we may play War in the East or something. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, no, interesting. How about Avalon? And I got to say, Sorcerers, I have that. I've never, because I, and I actually bought it because I like weird stuff. So I said, oh, this looks really weird. Let's check it out. You know, there is a solitaire really scenario in Sorcerer that's actually kind of, it, it's, it's, it doesn't use the most of the normal mechanics of the game, but it works as a, it's almost like an early States of Siege game in a way. Um, so you should check out this album. Avalon Hill. I did enjoy a number of times. I I never had like I never had Africa Corps or Stalingrad or or Bulge, but I actually got 1776 as a Christmas present, and I played that a fair bit. And I couldn't I couldn't play you know the advanced was with the tactical cards because <laughs> you're like I'm you know, trying to decide against yourself and. So right. I experiment, tried to experiment, but I, I liked the the overall game, and I had outdoor survival and had D Day. Um, so I did have a lot of you know fun with those too. Oh, Battle of the Bulge, you know, it's interesting in that. A lot of people, I always say this is, and I've done a video on it, but the uh, the eighty one edition was probably my favorite, but the sixty five edition. I think people forget how innovative that game was, at least for Avalon Hill person. Now, I, I can't say across the board, but when that came out, that was the first game that I'm aware of that had contact results, engaged results. You know, it wasn't just your typical three to one table, right? The, you know, the and uh, I played, uh, I know I played a ton of that, but uh, 
What about outside of the two main companies, SPI and, and um, Avalon Hill? And it, we'll, we'll get into more modern stuff here in a little bit, but like, you know, you got what, when SPI took over TSR, you got 3W, all kind of, they're not super old, but well, they are if you go back to their England days. Um, but, you know, 3W and, um, you know, Battle Line, which used to be Heritage Models. Do you have any of those favorites from those days, uh, like those other companies? or Most of my early experience was with SPI and Avalon Hill. Um, when Victory Games came out, uh, you know, I, I especially enjoyed Ambush. That was, you know, quite an experience working through the the uh, the solo process on that and trying to be really careful you don't get lost and get on the wrong paragraph because then everything would go nuts. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. Um, I did I did discover uh, Yaquinto Games and. Uh, I was always fascinated by the covers and, and then sometimes the, the games inside were, you know, not quite as like, I, I liked uh, space games like Starfall looked real cool, but turned out it was a really kind of too generic with the, the, the star grid and the, the random warp points. And it's like, mm, it, I think it needed some, some, some better, you know, play testing to come out with something that was, a little uh, less tedious and long. I was fascinated by B Beast Lord. Beast Lord was amazing. Um, you know, having the sort of asymmetric between the goblins and the elves and the humans and the, the Beast Lord. And it was like, just that was fascinating to me um, there. So Yaquinto definitely, Victory Games. Um, yeah, Victory Games was great. I, I think there's a few odd, like, I have a friend who, who bought a lot of games and we would usually play, uh, you know, one of the days on the weekend at his parents' house where they had a big, huge pool table with the surface on it. We would play there. We play for like eight hours and whether it be like multiple war games or role playing games or stuff. And he would always find things from different publishers and, and pull them out and uh, like a divine right. Um, so that was a lot of, fun and uh, yeah i can't really recall too many of the other publishers back then it was what do, what, do, what do you think of this question from nguai he says did avalon hill and spi have competing titles i know what i think but i'd like to hear what you think I mean, in terms of like the same you know genre or topic yeah sure they would definitely like and even uh especially as other times they would come out with multiple games on their own on the same topic you know they would have a different implementation, a different scale, maybe. Um, and uh, SBI was definitely, you know, trying to muscle on Avalon Hill. And of course, they ended up, you know, producing too many too fast and getting in the cash <laughs> crunch problem, which, you know, was their eventual demise, you know, that and, you know, having office space in downtown Manhattan that was, you know, too expensive and all that stuff. That's yeah, it'd be interesting. I, I think from what I've read is, uh, and you know, um, it was very interesting. I have a friend of mine that I game with. He lives up in Reno, and he's a little bit older than both of us. But he uh, actually, when he was in college in New York, worked in the art department for SPI, and he was part timer and. Yes, I, I'm trying to get him to come on the show because he's got some really interesting stories to tell. But uh, anyways, you know, um, I don't know. They, they actually cooperated quite a bit together. I mean, they were competitors, Avalon Hill and SPI. Well, but they, from what I understand, they actually. Like uh, Bill mentioned the fact that, that, you know, Dunnigan sold them a number of designs, yes. you know, <laughs> some of the iconic, oh, Avalon Hill, they go, yeah, that's actually Dunnigan, you know. <laughs> So it's like, uh, it's good. But uh, Nangoy also mentioned uh, meta gaming. So the micro games, Ogre, you know, and Melee and Wizard and Rivets and all those. Yeah, I Hiller's War. Those, those were great. Yeah, that was uh, yeah. Hiller's War was meta gaming. That sticks was, and stones. Yeah, that was the. It was in the. It was bigger than the little micro box. It was like yeah. called a like a meta history or something. Meta yeah. history I, one. I, or, I I and I have that. I don't have that. 
I have Hiller, the Avalon Hill version, but I have the Air Eater Strike Back, or, which oh, is yeah. a box, Air and the Air Eaters. <laughs> and then I have, I actually just picked up for the total nostalgia, it was Sticks and Stones for metagaming, which is, uh, I actually played it way back when, but it's it's fun. You take your tribe of cavemen, and there's all these different scenarios. You can go mammoth hunting, or you can go fight each other, and, you know, it just... It's like all their games, I thought, were just really fun. And they were, you know, relatively cheap, right? Like, you know, even back then, you know, two bucks or whatever, you know. Yeah, two ninety five or whatever. I yeah. remember the, the Chitin, Chitin 1, you know, and, and then they were, it was touted as being part of the Hymenoptera Wars, you know. And I was like, I kept waiting and waiting for this this series of and never did he never published any more in that series like ah, i wanted more bugs you know more insects so obviously you know i was gonna say so we'll get into a little more modern you know you've done uh obviously like historical board game company um I, so why don't you talk a little bit about what some of your favorite new publishers and when i say new that could be relatively anything from gmt through the you know white dog and whatever you know the door is wide right open. well just like you said it's your, 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 so, for you, so. i want to digress a little bit so like i said before like i started like really getting back into gaming in 2017 because i was thinking about getting into computer game development and took a couple of online courses. And one of the things that they emphasize is that you should learn board game creation first, board game design, because it's best to try to prototype things on paper before you ever do a computer game design. So I started looking back into the games that I had and I got totally hooked on trying to get everything that I had in the past and then everything that I'd played at my friend's house, but I never owned, and then everything else I'd ever seen. And so I started getting exposed to more and more non-war games, board games, and I just almost like, you know, ah, I kept joking. Well, I don't have them all yet. Um, so, you know, anything from Z-Man, uh, Fantasy Flight Games, Mayfair, uh, in the war game market, um, so... Holland Spiele um, is another one that, to me, is like I'd seen some of their titles and says, oh, I don't want to wait to get it all the way from Holland. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> like, oh, it's in America. <laughs> I was expecting the shipping. I, like, oh, I got to get this game, this Siege of Ismail. It's like, oh, this, 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 you know, Siege in the in the 1450s or whatever. And it's, it just sounded fat, fascinating. And I was like, oh, it's no, it's an American company. So. And I got hooked on trying to collect them all. You know, it's like any they have they have the stupid number on the side of the box, the hex number. You know, and like once I start seeing those numbers, like oh, I have gaps, I have to fill them in. So I started buying them all, and I'm at the point wow. where I don't have them all, but I have like the first seventy-two. Oh wow! Games okay. that they've released, and then maybe one other one. You know, so like they're up. To, they just released their eightieth game, and I have like seventy-three of them. <laughs> It's wow crazy. no that's well i don't know if it's crazy because I, I i for a long time did the same thing i'm a completionist right yeah exactly not not with holland's people i have like three or four of them and i have small publishers i want to say if i did a count and it'd be somewhere around 12 i probably have more white dog games than anything but uh more because i like to just buy like I said, oh, that looks like an interesting subject. And, you know, I have stuff from companies in Europe, like one-offs and stuff that are like, oh, this is a battle from 1621 that I know absolutely nothing about. <laughs> right? like, that's, you know, so that's, uh, that's interesting. Let's see here. So we got. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, there's a real appeal to discovering those obscure titles, you know, from independent publishers things that have been desktop published you know um and it's it's just amazing and i'll i'll hear on someone's live stream or someone talk about something and i'll zoom in on it and oh my god you know i have to have this obscure thing like uh what was the one i bought uh it was a, a certain period of uh history in india um owls and crows or crows and owls i can't remember and uh 
you know, someone had mentioned it like on the Compass live stream and I had to go out and, and buy it. You know, I just <laughs> tracked it down and I actually got a hold of the, the designer who created it. And he, he said he had to go search an old box, you know, that had gotten slightly mildewed and he had like 10 copies left and he sold me one, you know, and it was, he sold it for just like 30 bucks, you know, and it was like just fun tracking that down. Yeah, no, it looks like we're featuring Chris here, but it's just, yeah, no, that, yeah, the weird subjects, it just get, I, I'm the same way. I'm, you know, obviously for obvious reasons, selling a lot of my collection, but I'm still buying here and there. And it's like, I still tend to like, Ooh, I hear, I, like, I hear something like, Ooh, I got to hunt the copy of that down. Right. <laughs> But uh, so Nanguaya, Chris, can you recommend people on YouTube or somewhere else that might not be know about? Yeah, you need to get on Facebook, Chris. Create a fake account. There's <laughs> lots of war gaming on there. Sorry, I know I've emailed you about it. So, but anyway, <laughs> I've been trying but to convince him know. also to get on Facebook. Yeah, I know he needs to, <laughs> but it's up to him. What about so YouTube? Can you talk about it? I mean, I'm sub I'm only subscribed. I mean, I watch you. Already and mow the most. I'm probably subscribed to. I can't even count how many different channels so, I'm actually subscribed. Yeah, to. there's there are tons of channels out there about board games, war games, not as much, but there's still a ton, right? Yeah, well, and then yeah, some of the content is hit or miss for some people. Some don't produce that regularly. Some are are, are folks that like. At first, I didn't like their content, and then I, I, I learned to love it. You know, there's like <laughs> different different people have different styles, you know, and, and sometimes you, you know, like, I'm, I'm sure there's people that don't like the, my style of talking or the way I ramble about certain things, and that's fine. I mean, there's different strokes, different folks, you know, and that, but, uh, you know, certainly, you know, Dan and Artie, the, the, the player's aide, um, Mo, um, Kev and uh, Gimpy, you know, there's, there's who's the there's, guy? There's ID Jester. Who's the guy in uh, Australia that uh, that does? There's a guy off the. You know, so you're gonna make me look on my phone. Yeah, there's there's a lot. A lot of times I don't I don't like remember you know where they're from, and sometimes I don't recognize the accents or not. Um, yeah, there's a a rough swordsman. He's from England, I think. Yep, yep. But, uh, but, uh, but no, there's a guy from Australia, and I'll remember it before we get off. I like watching his. He's done a lot of World in Flames, and he's doing, of course, Axis Edition Ultimate Edition right now. And no, Chris, you don't have to shut up. You can keep asking questions. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, and there's Nanguea's channel. Don't forget. Nanguaya, oh, here you go. Or if you're World War One information. Yeah. And then, of course, we got, don't forget, if you're into Napoleonics, Eric's game table, and then Nathan Wise guy. Yeah, that might be him. Eric, Eric does some really good sort of tutorials about Napoleonic Excellent. tactics. I mean, I, I started getting a real appreciation for when he was talking about, you know, here's, uh, Labatai, and here's these how you implement these formations and why there's these gaps and your cavalry can go through here and artillery can shoot here and it's like you know, holy moly like not not just line them up and clash it's like no you're gonna get your butt kicked if you do that if you actually know the, the tactics and you know learn how to implement them in the system you'll you'll do so much better and that was like eye-opening stuff so yeah yeah i love that series like you said that eric's done there yeah absolutely Right, the Napoleonics, the Labatai. I love Labatai, by the way. But, um, yeah, and then there's, you know, I, I think what's interesting too, and, and some of the people are regulars on here, but you know, like you do replays, I do replays, obviously, Chris does replays of uh, Durrell Creek. And I don't know if people realize how hard those are to do and get them correctly because. Well, I don't know about you, you know, we, I always appreciate when people say, hey, Mark, you screwed this up. Hey, thank you. That means you watched it, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but, you know, but yeah, there are a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of work. So. I, I love getting the feedback. And so far, you know, 99.9% .9 has all been nice and polite stuff. And, and so absolutely, you know, oh, correct yeah, absolutely. criticism, all that stuff. Love it. I did, I did a series on um, uh, Anzio. 
I did a few videos on the Avalon Hill Anzio. And there was this guy, and I even eventually started, I just would tell people in the videos, make sure you go read the comments. Because there was a guy, like, I think it's the only game, that, I can't remember his name. But I, I it's I got to believe it's the only game he's ever played. I mean, it was <laughs> like his knowledge was amazing. And I was like, go read the comments. And I actually had some email exchanges with him. And he w didn't want to do it. I said, you know, you really need to put together a player's guide. Like his knowledge was something else. It really was. How about, you know, you talked about Napoleon's last battles and stuff. Are you a fan of the uh, OSG Nap library Napoleonic battles? Well, I, well, I'm certainly a fan that they're publishing all those. I love the maps. I've not yet had a chance to play them yet. And one of my goals was to say, okay, I'm going to play all these old uh, Napoleon's last battle quad, and then I'm going to play them in the, in the Napoleon's you know last gamble um, and and see the difference you know sort of do a compare and contrast I just haven't had a chance to get around to that there's there's so much stuff that I want to do and my ability to to buy ten titles for every one I play is 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 ridiculous but uh, well yeah I'm I'm definitely a big fan of of Zucker's work um, <laughs> just just haven't played the new stuff yet. Yeah, I've, and I, I'll just say this: I've played them. I think they're great. I mean, I, I mean, I've played them all, obviously, but I, I really enjoy them. They're colorful. They set the mood. How about VUCA simulations? Do you have any of their games? I'm I a, did. I've picked up not all of them. I'm, I've decided to like. I'm not buying like naval games now, and not buying you know air games um I, you know there's a few exceptions but um i like you know the the production and I, i've seen you know people play like you know across the river boog and things like that and i can tell that some of the games are a little too fiddly and too much dicing you know it's like the activations the amount of activation rolls for this way and that way in in boog just seems seems crazy to me but i'm also totally into comparative study of, of design systems. And so some of these games, even if I'm not necessarily going to end up playing them or to much great extent, I like to go and look at the me mechanisms and figure out what's going on in the games to be able to leverage them for my own games and just, you know, try to, to figure out what's there. Um, so yeah, VUCA is just really, you know, knocking them out of the park come up with really good titles and great production quality. Well, what, what I got to say this, I met them at uh Consum Expo last year, which knock on wood, I'll be getting to go to again this year. Um, but I got to tell you, these guys, they were play testing a Napoleonic 1812 game the whole week. And, of course, I was busy playing Death Threat Normandy. But any, anyways, long story short, every time I'd go out and and uh, and by the way, it's a bucket list convention. If you've never been, you should go. Um, but there, it, the game was getting played, and it, it literally looked like final production. But what, anyways, what was interesting was, you know, sitting there listening. Sometimes, you know, the kibitzing that was going on about the game with the players was that impressed me. Was two things was almost every time was like, man, that game came down to the last die roll, right? <laughs> or it was really close. And then what amazed me was Patrick from VUCA would be sitting there with his notebook and he'd be like, oh, we got to fix that. We got to fix this. Like, and I, I feel like their stuff, it, it's getting better, but it's, it's it, graphically, it's stunning. And then, but I like their stuff's really well play tested. And they're a group of young kids. I mean, kids a relative yeah. term but they're, yeah, in right, their, right. They're, they're in their <laughs> early 30s i'm 61 so they're in their 30s yeah, yeah. they're in their early 30. 30s and what's so it, half they, my age sort of really quick people may not know this their main business though is uh high-end poker supplies huh. and they have they have like customers in the nfl and stuff and how do i know this because they did a seminar at the thing and they talked about the games and their company and they showed pictures and a powerpoint and what their goals are and this and that but yeah anyways i i gotta say you know, bug wasn't your cup of tea but i i would recommend if you, people don't have any of their games pick something they like and pick it up it's it's it, 
the, just the production quality is just amazing. I'm looking forward to actually the Knock Paris. That's one I've been reading up on. The uh, West Front World War one, the one that they did. I'm hoping to get to get that to the table. So let's see. Oh, here Bill says their game about France 1914 is outstanding. Yep, it is, and they have very small uh, 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 learning scenarios. They're yeah, they're just phenomenal packaging that they do. Oh, what's this? Eric says Vuk is accepting orders. For the, oh, the 1812 Napoleonic campaign game. Okay, that's good. Yeah, time. I just put my pre-order in last night. <laughs> <clears throat> Please expand Bill's post-scratcher. I want to know. Oh. Oh, we're talking about Knock Paris, Chris. Yeah. Not, I can't spell it. Maybe Bill Knock. or somebody else can. <laughs> N-A-C-H-T? N-A-C-H-T. Yeah, go to VUCA Simulations website, Chris, and just buy it, okay? <laughs> See, I, I told you I'm not the guy to ask. <laughs> but honestly, yeah, it's it's pretty impressive package. They just came out with a new, uh, their North American website. So now they have the European-focused one and the North American one. So I wonder if they're also getting more friendly friendlier shipping to canada too oh oh that's it no okay i didn't sorry i didn't think about that i'm I, i'm not i'm not a snob i just didn't think because i was like well they've always shipped to the u.s because they have a, a warehouse in texas texas yeah but, but uh no that's a that's a great question i i wonder why i guess maybe that's something i should email patrick about and say hey buddy because you know actually he's you know he's very supportive of what's going on with me and my wife but i'll uh maybe i'll ask them say hey you know you got any plans for canada maybe they just need somebody to say hey i'll be a distributor you know i don't know you know kind of like harry Rowland does a world in flames you know like i don't know if people know that he'll actually like he'll pay you and stuff but it's like he'll go out and say hey i need a new guy in north america that will distribute my world in flame stuff and so if you go to uh, Australian Design Group and order something World in Flames, paying Australian dollars, it actually gets shipped out of Michigan because hmm. his current guy's in Michigan. And uh, but uh, yeah, it's 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 interesting. So what else? Uh, you know, we still got another. Let's see, six. So we got another fifteen minutes or so. What what else do you want to talk about your channel? You want to. Whatever you, you know, people got questions. What's this? Brian R. Smith, ship to Canada. Hey, Here we go. Hang on. What does he say? Heavy surcharges we have to accept to be in this hobby. Okay. Yeah. I guess that's in regards to like the import fees and stuff. So, yeah. so uh, go ahead. I'd like to let people know that. There is a game giveaway on my channel right now that's going to close this weekend, probably Saturday night or Sunday. So there's a war game category and a board game category. There's going to be two winners. So sign up for that. And it's uh, open to people outside this. You do have to pay for the shipping, though. So <laughs> depending on your country, it could cost a fortune. But uh, reminder for that. Um, so what else do you want to know, Mark? Is there any... Uh... Yeah, I think I... Well, I mean, you know, it's just kind of fun. I always think to hear, like, the history. You were talking earlier about D&D. &D. So actually, my burning question is, how far back since Wargaming, you went back to 1975, how far back do you go with Dungeons & Dragons? So I was in high school, uh, and... Was I a sophomore or a freshman? So, uh, friends and I, we were, we were taking an economics class. Normally, seniors took the economic class, and we were underclass when we were taking the class. And and uh, I think it was after the Christmas break, and three of us had all bought or had gotten the Dungeons and Dragons basic set and the blue box, the Holmes D and D, and we had we we had all gotten that over the the, the holiday. <laughs> And uh, so we started playing that. And so we hadn't heard about original D&D. &D. Eventually, one of the guys picked that up. But the uh, 
they started coming out with AD and D, but they start with the monster manual first. So at first we were kind of confused that like the one game went up to armor class nine, this one goes to armor class 10. And we were like, uh, so this new version's coming out, but it's not out yet. They're going to release, you know, the books over the years. So we ended up, uh, playing some other th games and I ended up creating my own role playing game, um, which was a cross between Dungeons and Dragons, Empire of the Petal Throne, and some of the stuff from uh, Metagaming's Melee. And I called it Wizards and Warriors. And this was before there was, you know, there, there's been Nintendo games called Wizards and Warriors. Eventually there was TV shows called Wizards and Warriors. There was a, a little independent uh, MMO game called Wizards and Warriors and stuff. But I was there first. I, <laughs> but... Uh, um, it was it was a fun little hybrid, but it, I never got it published. It's just that, something that we played amongst our friends. So, and I've long since lost that. I wish I still had most of the game designs that I did way back in the seventies and the eighties. I've lost them. Some of them I still have, but uh, <coughs> most of them are gone in the moves wow. at various times. Now I go back as far as let's see. I was in eighth grade, so that would have been like nineteen seventy eight somewhere in there 77 78 and there was a or was I or seventh grade I can't remember but there was a kid had the white box and we played that now I'm sure it wasn't a first printing because it was you know that late but that was my introduction my favorite man, memory from Dungeons and Dragons is there's a regional convention here called Pacificon that we get about 1200 attendees I've run the war game part of it for I don't know, almost 30 years now. And uh, of course, didn't make this last year, but I'm hoping to be there this year for it. But I had breakfast with one year, our, our guest was Dave Arneson. And I they had a thing where you could pay to have breakfast with them. And so I paid my whatever, 10 bucks, and we had a nice table. And it was really wonderful being at that table with David Arneson. You know, he talked about creating Blackmore and... You know, he didn't very honestly just a wonderful gentleman. Like, didn't once get into any of the conflict between him and Gygax. It was just how wonderful the game was. And just, and I got to tell, I'll never forget that ever. Like, it was just a phenomenal, um, phenomenal breakfast. And I, it's funny, there's a group that I found locally that still plays first edition advanced DD. So I'm waiting for them to say, hey, Mark, if you want to play, we're going to start up again. So we'll see. And then recently for me, I got to talk about old school. So I would like to know, is there any old school? But I'm gonna, I want to tell you, I think what's interesting is there's like a re mini revival going on around here of Starfleet battles <laughs> of all games, right? Have you ever played Starfleet Battle? Yeah, I I very had complex, but very crunchy. Big, like three and a half inch binder. I can still picture it. it's like a dark forest green with all the SSD sheets in it that I had oh, yeah, uh, made nuts. copies of and put them in the protector sheets. And oh man, I had yeah um, explodes right. Yeah, but it it was like <laughs> hard hard to play big battles. You know, if you got four or five people together and you wanted to have enough build points and you like, you just like you'd come up with crazy stuff. that's just going to take forever to play. Right. No, no doubt. I'm not saying it's for the lighthearted. I mean, the, the only thing we're doing right now in the group, um, there, it's free online. They have this cadets uh, training book and it walks you through. And so we're doing that. And then, you know, I pulled out my old master rule book. And like you said, it's like, but, you know, it's one of those games, too, where, you know, in fairness, I play ASL. I, I'm not scared of complexity, but the, the in fairness, you know, yeah, you can get as crazy as you want or you can, you know, you can kind of pick where you want to be with the, the game. The interaction of the rule systems got to be a combinatorial explosion, which was their problem, trying to keep track of, you know, this expanding sphere generator and this you know, ADB and this thing here and enveloping plasma torpedo. And I was like, Oh my God. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of fun, but I actually like that they went and created that training cadet game, sort of a simple, I don't want to say dumbed down. It was just, 
it was it was a, well, a, a, still a lot there now, actually but it's application but there's still the essence of the tactics and and you know learning to plot and not be too overwhelming like you know, someone was calling it you know the the accounting game you know and it's like i like the plotting the energy and trying to decide you know what what to do and how to you know maneuver or not and how much yeah, I, I think overload I think that's what I mean. I know the couple, when I say revival, so there's like in my area, there's like four of us now, and then there's a few, a couple hours from us, but, and I'm sure there's more, but yeah, it's been interesting watching it. But yeah, I like the options. I don't like complexity just to be like, oh, it's complicated, so it makes me smart. I, I just like to, to, I like games that give you options. And I don't mind, and I never have minded investing the time in a game. But there are games, too, let's be clear, that are mechanically simple, but complex, like in strategy. Well, yes, too, interesting right? decisions. That's what yes, it's all about. That's, that's, that's the enjoyment. The key. Yeah. So, probably, so probably, yeah. I think the only game I've ever played that I did not like because it was too simple or too generic was the gamers, of course, did the standard combat series. And I've enjoyed a lot of those titles over the years. But the one that I did not like was Crusader. It was, like, so generic. It could have been, like, Space Invaders. I mean, it had no... To me, it had no flavor. But I always say, hey, enjoy your journey, because, you know, it's, it's like anything. It's like your treasures, my garbage, vice versa, right? It's like... Everybody needs to just enjoy. So what did, uh, wouldn't, well, yeah. Okay. Eric, that's, I guess a fair comparison, <laughs> except wooden ships and Iron Man's way simpler, but yeah, it's, it is ship combat. It, it, it's very, uh, that's, that's, that's the great, like the that. great joke is that, you know, okay. it's two dimensional, right? There's no three dimensionality. And when they came up with that line in Star Trek, Wrath of Khan about three dimensional maneuvering, you know, it's so funny because it was like a direct jab, almost that Starfleet battle. <laughs> right. Forgetting there's a third dimension here. So, yeah. And I want to comment on Bill's comment about Air War. So, Air War was a really complex beast if you wanted to do the real realistic advance rules. And, and you know, the, the basic game started with like, here, you maneuver this way and you can turn this off, this off. And then they say, oh, by the way, there's no way that planes can... <laughs> actually maneuver and turn that quickly and so you end up having to in the advanced rules you know making it like half or worse the, the, the amount of time that you can maneuver and so like it became kind of tedious to play a, a battle out at those you know high speeds and such needing the distances to turn so i favored the ufo scenario and the dragon scenario because <laughs> those guys could you know they had special like the the UFO could just eat, 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 change all over, and the dragon moved real slow, but he could turn pretty fast. And so you're trying to zip around in your jet, and you're you know, overshooting the dragon all the time because you can't go that slow. So those are fun. Scenarios. Did you ever play Fox? I'm just curious. Have you ever played Fox Bat and Phantom? No, I had not played any of those either. really old, early. I think I played Rick Toffin's War once. Got my butt kicked. You know, a lot of time my friend would bring out these games that. Uh, he and his buddy had played dozens of times. And, hey, let's play this, you know. And I'd like, okay. And I'm like, ah, I <laughs> haven't figured it out yet. And I go, just go, get my butt kicked. What, what about JD Webster's uh, air superiority system? Like speed of heat over the right, octane spitfire. Uh, no, I have not. Those? No. GDW did a title. I'm drawing a total blank. They did airstrike, but that was the ground one. It's a, I, that's one I've always enjoyed. I haven't played it in a few years, but I got a guy lined up. used to play it a lot, and we're just trying to coordinate. When does Mark feel good, and when can he come over? That's been a little bit of a challenge. But uh, I'm looking forward to actually playing that again. What I always liked about it was it has – it actually has really good reviews if you want to play an air game. It's definitely involved, not on the level of the air war, but it's, it's a energy management – the guy that designed it, uh, J.D. Webster, he was a pilot in the Air Force. And actually, the uh, he actually did Avalon Hill's Flight Leader, which came out of a game that he did called Check Your Six. 
Mm. He actually designed that too, I believe. But this air superiority system, um, it's literally like Clash of Arms just did one on the East Front. It's got hundreds of engagements in it. And, you, you know, it's, it's, I think it's really neat. But what I always liked about it was it does have a little bit of a role playing aspect. In other words, like, you know, you're going to like, uh, you know, I, I can remember playing a game of it where it's like, okay, I'm going to eject because my plane's going down and you roll on this and it's not complicated, but it's literally like rolling the ejection table and then what happens to you. And it was uh, anyways, you know, kind of interesting. I enjoy it. Um, so Bill says Fox bat and phantom is air war light. Okay. I guess that's fair. I have it. I've never played it. So, uh, oh, Eric left to go teach fencing. So, all right, well, got a couple minutes left here. If there's anybody who's got a, a dying question to ask or haven't ID'd yourself in the comments yet, uh, burning question for Mike. I'm going to ask Mike, how many war games do you have in your collection? Well, so Board Game Geek tells me that I'm a Herculean collector which okay. I think is in the order of three or 4,000 games, but that's, okay. that's, that includes all the, you know, I have a bunch of board games, card games, you know, and I've, and I've tried to track them all in, in board game geek. Um, You're way more organized yeah. than me. My, my board game list is so out of whack. It's not even funny. I, but... I had to keep up because I kept buying things that I already had. And sometimes like I would, I would forget something and say, oh, wait that a minute. That never I, happens to I me. I put though. a pile aside and I was going to log it and I didn't. And so, like, oops, you know. <laughs> but sometimes, even if I'm logging, I've, I've had a case where I've got duplicates because I bought one, forgot about it, it hasn't come yet, and bought another one. <laughs> you know? Let me tell you why I asked that question. Because people ask me, like, you know, I get in these conversations about, hey, Mark, how many games do you have? I said, well, with all the sales I've been doing, I'm down to about, six or seven hundred right and that that doesn't include my magazine games that's like my my box games and my folio games and my but at one point i had about 1500 but i would say this like i actually have a friend of mine that he's been gaming since 1959 he's he's in his early 70s now and he actually has no idea you know he's like still i talk to him every once in a while what am i gonna do mark you know and he has about eight thousand games probably over 8,000 and people are like, Oh my God. But if you, th I don't know, it, it's like, I always like to say, enjoy your journey. Like it's, it is what it is. Right. You know, it's like, he's had the, re you know, and it's like, it sounds like a lot, but he's been gaming since what, 1959. That's a lot of years of, uh, uh, you know, buying stuff and he's never sold the game in his life. So, so Mark, I just checked on, Board Game Geek, and it tells me I have <clears throat> six thousand five hundred and forty games in my okay. collection. That's awesome. ridiculous. <laughs> well, you know, it is what it is. You know, that I mean, the, the, but at least you're organized enough to do that. I'll give you credit for that. Because me, it's like if if somebody was, to, you know, I'm more gamer 1965 on board game geek. And if, if somebody went and looked at mine, they go, Oh my God. And I, it, that list is so out of whack. Like I've entered stuff that I've bought. I've never subtracted stuff I've sold. It's, it's just, and I've had a friend of mine, uh, Mike Kelly's offered. He's like, Hey, you know, I'll come spend a day or two, you know, I'll help you. And I've been like, we just haven't done it. Cause when we do manage to get together, we play a game. So it's more fun than inventorying my collection. So, <laughs> you know, but duplicates of any, that's a good one. I know that I do. I come across duplicates all the time. So I, still, it's getting less and less, but, you know, what's bad, do you ever do this? So I'm going to ask you one last question and then we'll close it. Is, uh, do you ever go to bed at night thinking about your games and then go, I know I got that game. Where is it? Have you done that? Oh, there has been times where I've like trying to find a game. Yeah. And, in, and, and I, I don't sit in bed thinking I don't go to bed until I, I'm trying to find it. 
And I've well, had ones that it's taken me like three or four. I, I do go to bed eventually, but my wife will kill me. Um, right. But yeah, there's been ones that's like, oh my God, where is Case Blue? You know, and it's like, yeah. that's a lot of money. I got to find that. You know, <laughs> I didn't lose it, did I? No, the one, I, the one I'm obsessing about right now, and then we're going to close out, is uh, White Dog. Mo did a video on it, The Night, which is uh, yeah. uh, Night of the Living Dead, basically. Yeah. I know I have it. I went to the spot where I have my white dog games and all my white dog games are there except for that one. And I cannot find it. I'm like, it's driving me nuts. And you I'm like, in that special place where you <laughs> knew you'd remember it. And of course so I you can don't play it. it. And, and it's a black box, you know, it's not, right. you know, it's not like, uh, anyways. So with that being said, anything you want to say is like final note and, before we close up, um, well, I want to again thank you for having me on, and it's, well, thank you. it's been, a been a pleasure, you know, uh, seeing your journey and having you share with us the the games that you love and uh, sharing your enthusiasm. I want to thank you for you know that gift that you give to the community. Thank it's a, been a real pleasure. All right. Well, I, I want to thank you for joining me. And I got to figure out who's going to be the next victim. But I, and thank you for, no, I do, I, you know, hey, it is what it is. And I love sharing and, and I just, I do, I want to help bring joy. And I got to actually like you, let's not forget, man, your mic has a giveaway coming up. And I actually need to figure one out because I went over a thousand and I said about a month ago that I was going to put a giveaway and I'm going to, I got to do that. So, um, Anyways, I want to thank all our viewers, everybody that checked in, and until next time, I like to say onward and forward, and keep on gaming, everybody. Enjoy, and we'll see you later. Thanks, Mike. Really appreciate it. See you soon. Bye. Bye.